And this is the Community Education Commission, and the floor is yours. I thought they had already turned it for you. Um, you're J, J-70-1. We'll apologize for that. Don't worry, I can start. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you guys for having us today. Can you hear me? Um, my name is Mary Beth Harding. I'm the Executive Director for Nashville Community Education. I have with me uh, Commission Chair Laura Moore. Um, also in the audience are our Community Engagement Coordinator, Lakeithia Anderson, and Administrative Services Officer, Joshua Hill. Nashville Community Education has had a great year, and we would not have been able to do it without our amazing commission and staff. Uh, as a reminder, the Community Education Commission provides affordable personal and professional enrichment for adults in the community. I have provided our current summer catalog and the FY17 annual report, so last year's annual report, for you to review. Summer classes begin next week, and I just wanted to remind everyone that there's still plenty of time to register. Our enrollments and revenues continue to increase this year. During FY18, we served almost 3,700 students in the summer, fall, and spring sessions. We've already brought in over $100,000 this year as of April 30th, and I project that that number will increase to $125,000 by the end of June. To give you a little context, when our current program coordinator, Imelda Alamia, and I started in the summer of 2015, we had around 2,200 students and a revenue of almost $60,000. So in the last three years, we've added over 1,000 students and doubled that revenue. NCE serves students across many locations in Davidson County this year. The Cone School, Wright Middle School, the Nashville Farmers Market, and at Amqui Station in Madison. And this summer, we're going to host classes at Inglewood Elementary in East Nashville, and we are partnering with Metro Parks to offer classes at the Coleman Park and Smith Springs Community Centers. We have also been discussing options with parks um, for classes in Madison at their new community center, which is opening up soon, and other locations in Antioch. Uh, we are a small staff, so adding locations needs to be done very slowly and intentionally, but we do foresee adding classes in those areas by 2019 or in 2019. And we've continued partnering with other organizations and fellow Metro departments, including the Farmer's Market, Nashville Public Library, and MNPS through our Spanish for Educators courses that teach education-focused Spanish to MNPS employees. We also continue to partner with the UT TSU Extension, the Nashville International Center for Empowerment, and Plate Tone Printmaking, Paper, and Book Arts. We are very proud of the number and variety of our class offerings. This year we've had 125 instructors offering 400 classes ranging in topics from finance to fencing, sp Spanish to seasonal cooking, and many, many things in between. Last year we requested the addition of a fourth full-time employee using funds that were already in our budget. And this fall, Lakeithia Anderson joined our team as the Community Engagement Coordinator. She has been able to not only increase our social and online presence, but she's represented NCE at more than 30 community events so far since starting. So in the upcoming year, she plans to increase her engagement and continue seeking ways to attract students that we currently underserve, which includes those without college experience and members of the Hispanic community. Our classes are very affordable, with the average class costing $35. However, we believe that no cost should ever be a barrier to enrichment, so this year, with the help of Metro, we were able to start a successful scholarship program. As of today, we've rewarded over $1,000 to over 15 students, several of them taking multiple classes each session. We plan to continue this program, pulling up to $2,000 from our reserve fund to cover the cost of classes for students seeking financial aid. The process to apply is very easy, and I'd be happy to describe it to anybody who's interested. And I think that's about we all have. So in, the, in this year, we continue to hope to maintain our enrollment and revenue numbers with moderate increases in both, while working towards increasing the diversity of our participants and our offerings. 
We will continue to seek out, out partnerships that are mutually beneficial and help us reach even more citizens. Thank you for allowing the time for me to share our work with you today, and we look forward to working with you more. Any council member seeking recognition? Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Chair Vircher. Thank you all so much. I'm really enjoying looking at your summer catalog. I really appreciate the work that you do. I think it's just so important for um, community building, and I'm glad to hear from your uh, last budget hearing that you're, you're able to partner more with parks um, and get out and use some of those spaces. As I look at your book, I still see, you know, the majority of your classes are, are at Cone, um, and, uh, you know, you've, you've got a great facility there. I wonder, are you just kind of piloting into parks a little bit, just seeing how that works and hoping to expand, and can you sort of speak to that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. It's basically a little pilot program. This summer, we don't normally have Wright Middle School as a location in the summers, but we felt like it was really important to keep that sort of southeast location, um, which is why we're going with Coleman. Um, the one issue that does come up with parks that we don't have, say, at Cone is space. So most Understood. of the centers have about one or two classrooms, so we can offer one or two classes a night if they're not being used. Um, and so that's one of the reasons it's kind of small in those spaces. We're going to see which locations um, people are really reacting to and wanting um, and add more classes as we can to those. And let me ask, and I can certainly pose the same question to parks, but as, you know, as we look forward and kind of like master planning our park spaces as we build these community centers, um, I know maybe traditionally they were thought of in kind of, you know, the parks and rec space and, and how they only solely they might be using those spaces. Um, but from a programming standpoint, kind of in, in an ideal world, would you all like to be having more available space in those facilities? Yes, okay. absolutely. The okay. one thing that's really nice at Coleman is they actually have a small kitchen and some of our most requested classes are cooking classes, um, especially healthy cooking and sort of cooking on a budget. Um, and it's really hard for us to find spaces to teach those. Um, so that was one really great thing about Coleman and we'd love to see some of that a little bit more too. Great, okay, thank you again, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Johnson, Karen Johnson. Thank you, Chair Vircher. Uh, thank you, Director Harding. Um, I appreciate the work that you do. The book is um, uh, very eye-catching. Um, what you put place online um, is, um, is excellent in terms of the graphics and the information that's provided. So the work that you all have done to bring this um, uh, Community Education Commission and the efforts you do through this up, I think has been tremendous. Now my question is mm -hmm. kind of like a little bit on the piggyback of what uh, Councilwoman Henderson said, and that is the usage of facilities. I am noticing that many of the classes are um, at Cone, which is good. I mean, at least we offer them but um, opening up to some community centers and not schools. I'm not seeing like in Southeast, um, many of my constituents have um, shared that they would like to take the Spanish classes mm -hmm. because we do have a large uh, Latina population. But I see nothing in Southeast Davidson County uh, where anybody can take advantage of that. So what has been the the hardship or the challenge with working with the school buildings? Okay, two things, I guess. At Wright Middle School, during the fall and spring, we do offer at least one um, of each of the Spanish classes. Um, and then, but during the summer, we didn't have the access. And also our teachers, this is really the main thing, is our instructors being able to go to other locations. So it's kind of, because they're volunteer instructors, they get to sort of choose which locations work best for them. Um, and we just have one Spanish instructor this summer. We normally have multiple, but everyone's on vacation. <laughs> so, um, but then second part of that question, working with schools, the biggest part has definitely been access. Um, we have to have access to the building and access to classrooms. Working with community achieved schools works 
better for us because they're already set up to work with the community and they have community achieves managers who are there to help us get keys and obviously security is gonna be a huge issue even at night when students aren't around. So just having access to buildings is a, is a big hardship for us and confusing for a lot of our students who maybe aren't part of the school systems or don't have a kid in school and realize how important that is nowadays. Um, and then just the locations themselves being able to, we at one point did have uh, Antioch Middle School, I believe, but it wasn't, most people sort of said that actually isn't a great location. We want something a little closer. Um, so trying to find the right location uh, with schools has been tough. Now working with Inglewood Elementary for our East Nashville location has been wonderful because they are a community achieved school and they want to get more community members in. And I think that is really the big thing is getting schools to want to get more community members in through our classes, even if they're not their parents. And we obviously want to attract the parents. Um, but people don't realize when you get adults that don't have kids into schools, they start to care a little bit more about schools is what we're really noticing. So trying to get the schools to realize that if you can bring some community members in, it's gonna be beneficial for everyone. What you're saying is the community achieves schools. I mean, for example, out in our area, we have a new elementary school online. We just built Smith Springs Elementary. We have new buildings. How has the school system worked with you all to provide the space uh, for uh, these type classes? It's just having to work with each individual community achieves manager. So since Smith Springs just opened, I actually need to reach out. We've been needing to reach out. And we out. also have Nashville State. That, that would probably be tougher to, because we do have some similar community education classes, um, that they would see us more as a competition okay. versus a yeah, collaboration. Um, but it's just, in terms of working individually with community achieves. And like I said, we are such a small team, so we have to think like, where's the next one we're gonna go to and plan for it. Um, so that is our next location is Antioch. Is well, I, I look forward to talking with you about it because I just wanna see more offerings, especially in that area, because I've heard from people mm -hmm. who wanna take advantage of that, um, just to get a better idea as to um, how you select um, a location and how does that class get offered versus another. But thank you all for your work and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Council Lady Johnson. Um, Executive Director Hardin, just wanna make sure I heard you earlier. You're saying you're looking at revenues for 125,000 this upcoming. I just wanna make sure I noted that correctly. Okay, yes. Councilman Prottmore. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Director Harding. Uh, during your, your opening speech, so to speak, uh, statement, you mentioned that you're gradually working with parks to um, implement and utilizing their facilities in Madison and Am Amquay Station and also Madison uh, Community Center, which is opening up this Thursday, I might add, <laughs> uh, grand opening Thursday at two o'clock. Um, <clears throat> but with that comes you have to have additional volunteers and resources. And I noticed in your, in your uh, letter, in the booklet, it says that you've gone from the uh, enterprise funding to the general fund. So that, has that opened up some, uh, at least some resources that would assist you along the way for utilizing the parks or utilizing any facilities or or uh, any other resources that will expand the program or is there something else that you feel that uh, you're lacking? Well, I know one thing everyone's <laughs> lacking, but. Yeah, absolutely. So last year we were able to increase our budget line where we pay instructors stipend fees. So they're volunteers. Some of them receive a percentage of class fees that help cover travel and things like that. Um, so last year we were able to increase that because our enrollments increased so much that we need to. So being able to hire more teachers obviously is a big thing. And then being able to hire coordinators for those sites. The nice thing about working with parks is because if they are open, they already have someone running security and the desk and we're not having to pay an extra person. Another issue with schools is if we're in the schools, our agreement says that we have to have a staff member there. Um, so we have to be paying someone to be there in classes. Um, so that is a 
problem as well with adding more locations or more classes or more nights. We have to pay the people to be there. Um, and right now we're right at budget, so adding more would take us over budget. Um, so that's why we're trying to be very strategic about how we add these classes and work within our budget. Well, thank you. I'm sure you'll get a lot of participation when you open up in more in the Madison area. Thank we you. Are, we are hoping to, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Councilman. Um, Councilman Lindau. Thank you. I just had a quick question. I know that you all have started using uh, the schools and you mentioned some of the parks facilities. Um, what is the charge? Do you know that they charge you for utilizing their space? We, they don't. We, so you, just share, we have a memorandum of understanding that we get the space for, for no cost. Okay, so you have that with the Metro schools as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's the first one we have, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah. That's the only question I had. Thank you. Yeah. Councilwoman Van Rees. Hi there. Thanks for coming to Amqui. And uh, I'm, uh, too, I'm very much looking forward to more opportunities uh, up in the Northeast Corridor, and particularly in Madison. I, I just wanted to, uh, I'm not on the committee, so thank you, Chair, for taking my comment and question. Um, there's a whole lot of work that you do in the arts space, and um, the Executive Committee and the Council has acknowledged that uh, arts is now part of the um, uh, parks and library and arts committee now, so we're kind of making sure that we further establish communication in regard to all three of those entities uh, from our level. And I, I know that you work with a number of really amazing instructors, actually some really awesome instructors that people don't even realize how amazing these people are that you're getting a chance to work with. Um, I'm wondering in what way do you collaborate uh, proactively with um, the Arts Commission in selecting or putting a call out to instructors and artists in this regard? We've never worked directly with the Arts Commission. Um, I, my background actually is in arts education, so that's one of the reasons a lot of those people are contacts. Um, and we've never worked directly with them except to maybe send out course proposal announcements um, in their newsletters. Um, and we've never, and used their lists to maybe invite um, instructors to become a part. But we, that's something we could definitely start to collaborate with. That's with. great. If there's any, anything that I can personally do to help um, establish that uh, ongoing relationship, I know that they're in the middle of transition as well. And uh, as they um, bring in any new um, level of understanding as to how, if, if I'm thinking, way ahead of myself, but because um, I'm, I'm still trying not to cry every, think I, every time I think Jen Cole is leaving. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, whoever the, the new director may be, if they're coming from out of state or out of the city, that we make sure that what you are doing is part of that overall vision of arts instruction and, and opportunity, be quite frankly, for um, a Nashville artists to be able to continue to instruct and grow. So um, anything I could do with that, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Seeing no other council members seeking recognition, Executive Director Harding, thank you so much to your team, um, your small team, <laughs> for the services that you provide for the city. And that concludes your hearing. If the hospital authority can begin to make your way down as they step down.